Good morning, my people. Welcome to my page. It's me, your sister, Zuzia Ariola. Yes, you're welcome to my page. Oh, this might be the first episode. As for it, I appreciate you follow me to uh, on my African Proverbs, my life arc. That will be the topic. African Proverbs, my life arc. You might think, oh, arc? Is Harry into hacking? No. When you say something is your life arc, it's a way you find solution to things you've been through. It has been, um, well, you can go good at to know, understand what life arc is. But to me, when I say something is my life arc, it's my go-to solution when, um, when I really need, when I really need a solution to something. So my go-to solution and something that really pick me up, even when I think everything is down, it's African Proverbs. You're welcome, my people. Like you must have heard the saying that says, it takes a village to train a child. Yeah, that's true. It takes a village to train a child. It also takes a proverb to train a child. Not just one, two, three. It takes proverbs to train a child. One thing I realize about African proverbs is, African proverb is very rich. Very rich. African proverbs, if we were to say something, I don't know if I'll be right, but African proverbs, I would say uh, 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 our great grandparents, our generations, African grand grandparents, they are the greatest bloggers. Yes, they are the greatest bloggers. You see them passing an information from one generation to another without expiring. I would say African parents are the greatest bloggers. Proverbs has been in existence from like forever and it's something that it's not, not getting out of existence anytime soon. Like I told you, it takes a proverb to train a child. There are some situations you find ourselves when I say African proverb is my life arc. African proverb is something I go to when I think it's, there's always a proverb for one thing you are going to at a time, you know? If you, I know everybody must, if one of us understand proverb either which way. But one thing I realize about proverb is it is priceless. It is ageless. Proverb has taught me, proverb, proverb is a way of transforming information from one generation to another without losing its existence. Do you get it? So if you, if today you've not been using proverb for your kids or for your life, Start using proverbs. Proverb is an ageless, ageless, ageless way of personal information. Things that have happened, you know, far in the times of our great great grandparents. You see them passing it on to us with proverbs. I have some proverbs I just want to talk to you about. One of my life hacks. And I told you, African proverb is my life hack. So daily, God willing, you'll be expecting me to bring uh, a proverb or two to you which I think helps in a particular situation. And you also, in the comment section, you can let me know what proverb works for you. What proverb have you listened to at a, put, uh, at a point in time in your life that cheer you up? What proverb, you know, there must have been some proverb that must have worked for you at any point in time. So you know, I would like to discuss it in the comment section. And also, I appreciate you to subscribe to my YouTube channel because I'll be live more on YouTube uh, as for okay uh what i'm gonna well, like i've told you uh i told the proverb is a prizes puzzle it's a puzzle that you can't you can't just solve you know it's a prizes puzzle you can pass from one generation to another and it will never lose its existence mm -hmm. like i told you a proverb is ever relevant i just want to use one or two proverbs that has really worked for me this proverb it's i think it's a kenya proverb it said to lose your way is one way to find it, to lose your way is one way to find it. Now, let's look at the literary meaning. It's like you're going somewhere, let's say you stay in Lagos, anywhere in the world, you're going to road A, but you end up finding yourself in road C. Do you know the easiest way to find road A is because you found yourself in road C, now you'll be able to ask for the road to road A. To lose your way is the easiest way of finding it. That is just the literary meaning. I've now just started in some stages in my life when I feel, 
oh, all hope is lost. When I feel, how come I found myself here? When I feel, how did I get here? When I feel, oh, the whole world is on top of me. I wrote back to that proverb, which says, to lose your way is one way of finding it. So what have you lost in life? You can hold on to this proverb. Like I told you, it is my own life arc. African proverbs, and I've told you the meaning of life hack. Life hack is a, a solution, something that brings it's a simple or clever way of finding solutions to issues of life. So, African proverbs are going to be one of my own life hack. So, it says to lose your way, like this proverb I said has worked for me, I'm, I'm putting it out to you. To lose your way is a way of finding it. So what have you lost? I thought it's the end of the world. I think I'm, I'm stopping here. I think I'm, I'm taking my life. I think I'm calling it quits. No, the fact that you have lost your way, like I explained to you, you are going to road C and you find yourself, you're going to road A, you're supposed to be on road A, you find yourself in road C. Yes, you have lost your way by finding yourself in road C. But guess what? Finding yourself in road C is what to give you the direction to road A. Because you're going to ask for uh, directions from people that, well, please, how can I get to road A? That's the literary meaning. To lose your way, it's another way of finding it. Hold on to that proverb. Anything you think you must have lost in life, anything you think you must have lost in your everyday life, in your experience, anything you must have lost, to lose that thing is another way of finding it. For the fact that you have lost that thing, it's not time to pick up yourself from where you stop. It's not time to ask... For, Ask people, what do you think is the way out? Though it's not all solutions you accept anyway, but it's that time to talk to yourself that, okay, now that I've made this mistake, what can I do? I'm not just going to stop here. It's not wrong for me to fail. I'm just going to pick up myself from where I fell. I fell. To lose your way, it's another way of finding it. That is one proverb that has really worked for me. Another proverb that has really worked for me is, uh, don't, blame God for, don't blame God for creating tiger. Thank him for not giving him wings. Don't blame God for creating tiger. Thank God for not giving him wings. Can you can you think of the literary meaning? I would like to hear from you in the comment section. A proverb that whenever you it's your go-to proverb. That's what you call life hack. A life hack is something you go to, you know. Apart from the word of God, which is my life hack, which I find comforting. Another thing that gives me comfort, which is my life hack, it's African proverbs. This other one I just told said, don't blame God for creating tigers. Thank him for not giving them wings. Can you imagine that? Yes, you know how tigers are. <laughs> you know they will devour. At least God has created them. Thank God they live in zoo. They don't come to us. We don't go to them. Well, but at least don't blame God for creating tigers. Thank God for not giving them wings. Have you imagined what it would be if tigers are like butterflies? Have you imagined how life would be if tigers are like birds? If tigers can fly to us anywhere to, to devour? Have you imagined how life is if tigers are like cock, um, mosquitoes, um, house fly, and uh, cockroaches? You know, God that created tiger knows that people will exist that will tame them and keep them in the zoo and the cage where they belong. So else you go to the zoo, tiger will not come and meet you in your room. And if you go to the zoo and uh, you do the right thing by just peeping at the tiger and saying hello, hi, hello, just watch, just for sighting. If you're not, I would say silly, to dip your hand, to say hello to the tiger by putting your hand in, the, in, his, in his cage, I don't think the tiger will come bite you. Those that own the zoo, that allow people to come visit, they know they got tigers and they have to put it on tame and locked up because it's not a domestic animal. So don't beg God for creating tigers. Thank him for not making them fly. You know how the proverb works for me? I've told you the literary meaning on you and I thinking about, okay, what does the proverb, how does that work for me? Yeah, do you know how the proverb works for me? Yeah. Any issue of life I face, I'll be like, at least I thank God. Definitely, once there is life, there is hope. I will thank God that if I can keep striving, as far as my God is alive, I will cross over and I will, and, and I will overcome. I will not blame God for making me go through that. I will not say, but God, you know I'm, I'm the happy of your eyes. But God, you know I love you. But God, you know I serve you. But how, how come I'm finding myself in this situation? No, I will not blame God for that. 
rather than blame God for that, I would thank God that He did not give the but uh, the, the the tiger wings to fly. I would thank God in the that's literally. I would thank God that He is not giving me, He's not giving the the situation opportunity to overwhelm me. You know, I may not have enough to eat. I may not have what to put on the table, but I will thank God that at least I may carry, I can soak it with joy. Where I strive to get a better chicken tomorrow. At least I will still thank God that, oh, I'm still not in a situation where maybe if I drink curry now, the rashes will just come more. At least I still thank God that the curry can digest. I will still thank God. While I'm thanking God for that, I will not sit on it and take curry as my daily meal. I will strive. Because I know once there is life, there is hope. And I know that he will be at a good work in me. He is able to perfect it unto the coming of Jesus Christ. So I will thank God for that situation I am right now. Where I strive to get to a better place. I will not thank God why do you create a tiger. I will not cry over creating the tiger. I will thank him he did not give the tiger's wings. What is that thing in your life that you are crying over? Thank God he did not give the tiger wings. For the fact that you could even cry, that means you're still alive. Thank God you could not give the tiger wings. What is that tiger? The, the tiger of life, the issues of life that is overwhelming you? Don't cry over it. Don't give up. Don't take your life. Don't commit. Don't say it's the end. Don't poison yourself. Thank God I did not give the tiger wings. It's your own tiger heartbreak. Uh-uh. Who told you that person was meant for you? Uh-uh. Thank God he did not give the tiger wings. It's the old tiger sickness. And who told you that God cannot heal you before they break? Who told you that the great Ella cannot touch you? Thank God he has not given the tiger wings. It's your own tiger poverty. Eh? Hey, who told you God that gives you, gives you, gives you, uh, um, 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 daily bread, um, um, day break, cannot do a miracle today? Thank God he did not give the tiger wings. Whatever tiger that is in your life, whatever is standing as a tiger in your life, you say thank God he did not give the tiger wings. Can you now see why I say that? African Proverbs are my go-to. African Proverbs is my life arc. Thank God he did not give the tiger wings. Whatever tiger that is disturbing in your life, thank God he did not give the tiger wings. Can you remember the two Proverbs we have, uh, uh, we have uh, uh, we've learned just now? He said, don't blame God for creating tigers. Thank God it did not give the tiger wings. Whatever tiger is consuming you in your life, you don't bother about blaming God. Why do you create tiger? You just keep thinking him that it did not give the tiger wings. It did not give that problem over your life wings. Uh-huh. If the tigers were butterfly, how would life be? If tigers were cockroaches, were housefly, how would life be? Thank God it did not give the tiger wings. And the other one I told you is that to lose your way is, is a, uh, to lose your way is one way of finding it. When you lose your way is one way of finding it. And I broke it down for you. That let's say your root is root A. You now mistakenly find yourself in root B. What will you do? You will definitely ask people around, please where is the way to root, a, to root A? How come you find root A? Because you lost root A in the first place. So to lose your way is another way of finding it. So we've dealt with two. I've given you two of my life acts. Okay, let's just make it. Let me let me give you one or two more. Those are my life acts. I tell you, apart from the word of God, which I find at my comfort zone, you know, the word of God is somewhere wherever uh, religion you are. Be you Muslim, I'm sure you have what gives you comfort in your Quran. Be you Christian, my fellow Christians, I'm sure you have what gives you comfort in the word of God. Apart from the word of God, the other thing I it gives me comfort. My run to thing that I really like, I mean, I was just like, ah, come, hey, this is like this now, like this, and, and, and don't blame God for creating tigers. Thank God he did not give them this. You know, I just say to myself, ah, no, I'm not blaming God for creating tiger. At least thank God he did not give tiger wings over my life. That means I'm thanking God for not making that thing have power over me. Because if tiger has wings, when he's just hungry, it will fly into the city and pick human beings like he likes. But thank God he did not give him wings. So whatever he has to eat is between him and, <laughs> and the zookeeper. Not that he just come and consume humans. So God knows the best. 
One thing of that proverb is that it's telling us God knows the best. Number two, it's saying it's thanking God for not making things overwhelm us. Another one for you. Okay, say so procrastination did so well. The days began to fall into it. Procrastination digs a well. Why the day began to fall into it? Yes. When we procrastinate, like you know, you know, you know, you know, like I told you, it's my it's my it's my life arc. Let me tell you my life arc. Let me tell you how this thing works for me just now. This um uh proverb talking to you about proverbs and everything. I've always wanted to do it, you know. Sometimes when I read open level to you, I'll get tired, I would still have some things to do. So I've always wanted to do it. And today when I was not going through one of the list of the proverbs, I was, I was going to tell you that it's my life arc, that it works for me when someone tell, uh, say it to me, or when I remember it, or when I say it to people, or when I see it somewhere. This very proverb that I'm telling you now, that procrastination digs a well, and the days began to fall into it. It's a, I think it's a Zimbabwe proverb. So that was what made, if you check the time now, I think it should be around almost 2 o'clock a.m. I mean, it's almost 2 a.m. Let me see. Yo, 1.49. It's 1.49 a.m. In the middle of the night. I said, oh, look at me. I'm promising to start to start this life um, skit of um, my proverbs daily. My life arc. African proverbs, my life arc. That we're planning to start it. That, ah, I'm going to be doing it daily. And I've got this is a new year. I look at the day. Today is 16. Ah, 16th already. I must do something new on this 16th because I love the number 16. <laughs> I said, I must do something new this 16th. Ah, it's 16th already. And I've not started my African proverb, my life hack. I said, I'm starting, Jerry. I just said, okay, let's start my, oh, my native. Oh, let me just arrange myself for And I started. Because I've been procrastinating myself. And it says that procrastination digs so well and the days begin to fall into it. Look at you know when I've been procrastinating, I want to start African proverb, my life arc. I've been procrastinating it for a while. For a while. I won't really say this very day. But it's not this year. It's not this year project at all. Eh? It's not this year project at all. I want to start African proverb my life arc. African proverb my life arc. I want to tell people that what my life arc as in my go-to solution when when I'm in distress, even every day of my life, even when I'm not in distress, where where what I really like to listen to the word of God and proverbs, African proverbs. Here's that. So this is another proverb it says procrastination digs a well, digs a well, and the days begin to fall into it. When you procrastinate, you are digging a well. Yeah, my people. I know it's not easy sometimes to plan some things. <laughs> it's not just forthcoming. I, I, I feel you. I'm. Should I say I've been there or I'm there? Do you understand? Mm. Sometimes we have, like me, I have so many plans of things I want to do. Okay, I have a plan of telling stories in a big form to children, to little children. I don't even have a camera, so I cannot set up that plan. Does that mean I'm procrastinating? No. Sometimes you don't have something that will take you to that stage at, at, the, uh, at the present time, you know what you can do for you not to not become a procrastinator? You can start from what you have. I think that's the solution. Because I, I, I was, because the plan I have, I was going to get a green screen, you know, get a green screen, get nice um, um, camera light, you know, and a very good camera. But since I don't have that camera now, I know God will do it. I'll get everything. Since I don't have the camera now, will I not stop my dream of telling you African Proverbs, my life act? I'll stop my dream of doing other skits I do online. No, I start with my phone. I start with my phone. My other phone, I felt, oh, this one I couldn't really do. So I just said, let me just use this other phone. So that is my own little way of oh, uh, um, stopping the procrastination. I understand that. What I'm trying to tell you is that I can feel you. Sometimes it's not really like you're a procrastinator, but things that you need to set up that thing, it's not at hand. You may not be buoyant enough to get it at that time. You may not have enough, or you may not, it, something might be delaying you. It's not like the real you, you're a procrastinator, you're lazy, you just want to do. No, there may be something stopping you. I feel you. I, I'm, I'm there. I get you. But well, you know the solution to that thing? It's not easy, man. I not really get someone to buy it for you. And I like, please, can you get me a camera? I really want to start and do this. This is what I really love to do. I want to do it full time. I want to... 
before, before you are saying that, you don't even know what other people are going to do. So what you can really do right now is to start with what you have. In the process, God will take you to where you are going. Are you getting my people? Start with what you have. Just start. Start. Just look at my dad. I'm starting. The way people are like, ah, your camera, like, your something, your output is not good enough. But you started. So procrastination digs a day and digs a well. Why did days fall into it? You know when you dig a well? When you procrastinate, you dig a well. The day, today has gone. Tomorrow is coming. Tomorrow will go. Next tomorrow will come. Next tomorrow will go. Yeah, and four days has gone. What you're about to say, Ijeta, Ijeri, Ijeru, Ije. Days will just keep going. Going. Last year has gone. I've, I've always wanted to do this since last year. Last year has gone. Kilinka has gone. So that's power procrastination. So those are one of my life are Something that I, I, was, I was just going to my diary of other things I still want to do. And I saw this. This very proverb is one of the proverbs I, I said I was going to talk about. And I said, procrastination dogs the world. Why did this fall into it? And I said, oh, look at me. I want to teach my, uh, I want to teach life arc. African proverbs, my life arc. Oh, oh, it's I'm even, as in, I'm in the show myself. I was like, okay, I'm teaching this proverb right now. Do you understand? So that's it. I just said, Procrastination dogs the well. When you dig a well, and you're not digging a well to get water, you're just digging a well. Eh, you think it will be empty? No, it will not be empty. It's the days that will be falling into it. Today is, today has gone. Tomorrow will come. Tomorrow will go. Next tomorrow will come. Next tomorrow will go. Eh, another day will come. Ten days will come. One week will come. The week will go. Every day will come. The day will go. Procrastination has dug the well. The days will not be falling into it. Colum, 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 colum. Can you see my people? That not, procrastination is not really what it is. Are you getting it? That's the third proverb. Let me do one more. Then we will be meeting daily, God willing. Another proverb says, um, the area covered by your life is not as important as what you built on it. The area covered by your life is not as important as what you build on it. Hmm. You are this big, you have achieved everything in life. I'm comfortable. I'm doing fine. <laughs> I'm among the uh, class. I know why. Uh, you know, the, those areas covered by your life is not as important as what you built on it. Whatever you do for yourself, it's for yourself. But whatever you do for people will be remembered. If God says, Ari, come on my rest today. Whatever I do for myself goes with me. Whatever I've done in the life of other people is what they remember. If God says, come home today, my daughter or my son, what will you be remembered of? Whatever you have done for yourself remains with you. Whatever you have done for others is what you'll be remembered of. Try and do good to someone today. Remember the proverb again. I'll type everything. Uh, uh, in the com uh, what's it called? I'll edit the um, um, description again so you can have them. The two proverbs you treated. I'm the four. I'll read it. I'll write it again. The area covered by by your life is not as important as what you build on it. How much comfortable, wealthy, influential you are, is not as important as how much lives you have influenced. You keep advising people, telling uh, uh, my, my motivating people they can do this. What about you introducing them to someone that can help them? If you can, I know so. I know sometimes all you can do is just motivate them. Good enough. But if you can introduce them to someone that can help them, why not help them? Remember this proverb: the area covered by your life is not as important as what you build on it. Like I told you, if God says, "Ari, come rest today." The area covered by my life is not as important as what I've built on it. That is the one I'll be leaving you with today. Think about it. How much area have you covered in your life? It is what you have built on it that matters. It might not be money. It might be kindness. It might be encouraging words. If you can draw, if you can draw someone to greatness, you can introduce them to things that can help them. Good, but if you can't, it might just be encouraging words. Some people, <laughs> you know, some people say that 
Uh, uh, by the time I'm done insulting you, you feel like killing yourself. You feel like dying. What's your game? You say you can insult someone that they will feel like dying. Really? When your mates are motivational speakers, with the words of their mouth, encouraging people to greatness. When your mates, they will see someone that is about to commit like this, they will just say one or two things to that person that, why must you do this? There is more to life. You can still make it. Tomorrow is bright. They will say things to that person. The person will say, oh, 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 I don't want to die again. The person will come down from wherever I, or whatever. Or maybe the person is trying to drink something. Um, for, I don't want to start mentioning names here. The person will just like, oh, I'm sorry. Thank God for you. I'm sorry I tried to do that in the first place. Your mates, oh, they can change someone that is trying to harm himself. They can use the word of their mouth to change the person. But you, the word of your mouth, will be like, I just don't want to talk of you. If I talk, you know, they will even say it like by your mouth, you say, Oh, Renu me or that. Oh, my poor Renu me or that. Don't let me bad that or better than the song. Uh, I want to call you a poor Renu that. You think you're the only one that can talk, insult people? Some of us just leave it at the feet of Jesus. That is that what children should meet in our hand? Insulting people? When God says you should go into the world and win souls. When we can use our mouth to win souls. What if you don't have anything to do with my mouth? How about shishing your mouth? You can help people in different ways. Encouraging. Uplifting. Advising. Several things you can do. You know? If you can't clean the pain in people's life, don't add to it. There's a problem with brother that says, Oh, look, bala, bala, look, bala, me, familiar, but she bala, me. If you cannot help me, leave me the way I am. Don't come and hurt and um, salt to their injury, pepper to their injury. Eh? Remember this proverb again. The area covered by your life is not as important as what you built on it. Between you and I, decide from today that, ah, oh, I do have myself covered several areas, but I want to build something good on it. Not out generally. In, in the relationship of people you meet. Can people miss you? You know, it's not about doing eye service. It, it's not about doing uh, Mrs. Nice or Mr. Nice. No. It's not going to involve money at all. But can you be kind with your actions and your words? It's a tough world. Everybody's under stress. Especially in this country, Nigeria. So what you building on your own area. The area covered by your life is not as important as what you built on it. Thank you for joining me. I'll be coming daily, God willing, to show you and tell you some of my life hacks. In the comment section, I'd like to know your own life hacks. What are some proverbs that works for you? What are the proverbs that if someone just tell you or you listen to it or you encourage yourself in it, it works for you? Please drop it in the comment section. Also, if you have a Gmail, all it takes to subscribe to a YouTube channel is a Gmail. On your phone, just log in your Gmail on your phone so you can easily subscribe. Because without a Gmail, you might not become some people are like, ah, I really want to subscribe to your YouTube channel. I don't even know the thing is not going. No, you need to have a Gmail. Once your Gmail is logged in on your phone, then you can just click the subscribe button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thank you. I like to know your life asks too. See you see tomorrow, God willing. Do have a wonderful day. Good morning. Bye.